For some people, having a dog or a cat just isn't enough. While some animal species can potentially make for great pets, although they may be a bit unconventional. Let's take a look at the top 15 most unconventional pets. Number 15. Fennec Fox Native to the Sahara Desert and the Sinai Peninsula that connects Egypt to Asia, fennec foxes are the smallest species of wild canines and are easy to identify because of their surprisingly large ears. They're perfectly adapted to living in desert environments, having developed ways to endure extreme temperatures and the lack of water, and have extremely effective sense of hearing that allows them to hear potential prey moving underground. In the wild, they live in burrows and hunt insects, birds, and small mammals, but they've been becoming increasingly popular as pets, in which case they live very different lives. Living for up to 14 years in captivity, breeders hand-rear the pups to ensure that they're as tame as possible before being adopted by new homes. And while they'll never fully be domesticated, they are usually gentle and fit in well with families. They are considered to be exotic animals, and because of their natural instincts, it's only possible to keep them in homes where there's plenty of outdoor space, where it's okay for them to spend their time digging. They're also surprisingly fast, which helps them evade predators like owls and hyenas in the wild, and can prove to be somewhat testing for any owners who aren't ready to chase after them. Number 14. Tamandua Salvador Dali famously had an anteater as a pet, and while the animals are usually regarded as being too large to feasibly keep in a home, there are two smaller species, known as tamandua, that are proven to be easier to keep as exotic pets. They're native to the forests and grasslands of South America, and while they hunt food on the ground, they're excellent climbers who actually spend most of their lives up trees. They're quite awkward when they move along the ground, as they're forced to walk on the side of their forefeet because their claws are so sharp that they'd otherwise injure themselves. This is in stark contrast to the closely related giant anteaters that can gallop, but is a further reason why tamanduas are popular pets, because they aren't able to move as fast. Their main food source is, of course, ants and termites, but they'll also eat beetles, bees, fruits, and meat. But crucially, they don't have any teeth, so rely on their gizzards to break down their food enough so it can be digested. Their sharp claws are perfect for tearing open termite nests to reach the meal that's waiting inside, especially since they have 16-inch long tongues that are covered in a sticky substance to help with trapping small insects. Unfortunately, they're now considered to be at risk in the wild because they've been targeted by hunters who mistakenly believe that they are responsible for attacking pet dogs or simply for their meat, which is highly prized. And it's possible that if things keep going as they are, the only tamanduas left alive in the world will be those that are in captivity. Number 13. Sugar Glider Sugar gliders are native to Australia, New Guinea, parts of Indonesia, and Tasmania. And as their name would suggest, they have a pair of membranes between their rear and front legs that allows them to glide between the trees in search of their favorite meal, sugary sap and nectar. Typically growing up to 12 inches long, they're nocturnal animals that have specifically adapted eyes to see in the dark and rely mainly on scent to find their way around. In a lot of ways, they're very similar to flying squirrels, even though they aren't closely related at all. And they're a highly social species that needs to be with several other individuals for their mental well-being. This is important for those being kept in captivity, because not only is it vital to ensure they have enough room to climb and soar through the air, but they also need to be in a group, otherwise they may become depressed. Often called pocket pets, sugar gliders are kept in countries around the world, although there are restrictions around where this is permitted. In the US, for example, it's generally allowed, but is illegal in California, New York, Alaska, and Hawaii. And even in their native Australia, the ownership is restricted to certain places because of the concern of their numbers in the wild. Number 12. Capybara Guinea pigs are incredibly popular pets around the world and are especially ideal for children because they're so calm and friendly. But for those looking for something from the same family that's a bit more to handle, then the only choice is a capybara. They're the largest species of rodent in the world and are native to the savannas and forests of South America. Growing up to 4.5 feet long and weighing up to 200 pounds, you might think that they're a solitary species, but in fact can be found in colonies of up to 100 individuals. While in their native countries, they're often seen as a rapidly breeding pest that competes with the same food sources as livestock. Around the rest of the world, they're usually regarded as incredibly calm creatures that are a pleasure for humans to interact with. A number are kept as pets at homes across the United States and in Japan where they're only kept at zoos. A tradition is developed during the colder winter months when they're taken to hot springs, something that's become a tourist attraction in its own right. Number 11. Horned Frog 
Endemic to South America, particularly Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil, the horned frog is particularly unusual species of amphibian, which because of its mouth is often called the Pac-Man frog. They tend to stick to grasslands near water sources and will attempt to eat virtually anything that passes by them, including insects, lizards, and even other frogs. This species is so greedy that they've been known to attempt to eat animals that are far too large for them and have suffocated in the process, meaning when they're kept in captivity, owners have to be extremely careful to only give them manageable meals. They can grow up to six and a half inches long and can live for as long as 10 years when kept in the right conditions. While their most obvious feature is their mouth, which is the size of half their entire bodies, they're also prized for their bright colorations and horn structures above their eyes. When they're happy, horned frogs will usually remain motionless in wait for food to pass, but they can easily become agitated and may try to preemptively attack. While they aren't anywhere near large enough to eat a person, they have sharp protrusions in their mouths that can certainly cause pain and damage if they latch onto a finger. Number 10. Chinchilla Chinchillas are a species of rodent that are native to the Andes Mountains in South America, where they're used to living at altitudes around 14,000 feet. Named after the Chincha people who used to live in the mountains and used to wear coats made of the creature's fur, they almost became extinct in the late 1800s as a result of extensive hunting for the clothing industry. They have the thickest coat of fur of all land mammals, and it's incredibly soft, which is why it was in such high demand. It also has a natural ability to repel insects, such as fleas and ticks, which has led to an increasing popularity in keeping them as pets, because at least on that front, they're easier to take care of. They do, however, need a lot of exercise each day, and as a result, require large spaces to continually move about it. In their natural habitat, they live in colonies that, in some cases, can number hundreds of individuals, as they're such social animals, so it's also crucial that the owners don't keep them alone. Their teeth keep growing throughout their lives, making it important to ensure they have something to grind them against, and they don't like water baths, instead opting to roll around in dust baths, which is the best way to keep their coat clean. Number 9. Spotted Gennet the spotted gennet is a species of cat-like mammal that's become popular as an exotic alternative to keeping a domesticated cat as a pet. They are native to the non-desert regions of Africa and have also been introduced elsewhere in the world, particularly in southwestern Europe. With bodies that can be up to 22 inches long and tails that are about the same length, they stick to areas of dense vegetation where they tend to wait on branches at night in search of food below that they can pounce on. Often said to have the faces of a ferret, the body markings of a cheetah, and the tail of a lemur, their unusual appearance means they're popular exotic pets, as long as the owners are adequately prepared. They are solitary animals in the wild and will remain that way in captivity too. This means they aren't so keen on handling and may not get on very well with other pets in the home, and are so fast that the best bet is to keep them in a large cage, and to take them for regular walks with a harness. One of the biggest challenges that owners face, however, is that they're so rarely kept as pets that it's difficult to find a vet who knows how to treat them. Because they aren't actually cats and are much more closely related to mongooses, they require frequent visits to an exotic vet to make sure they're adapting properly. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Pygmy Goat Pygmy goats are an example of how selective breeding of certain species can create a very different animal from what their ancestors look like. And instead of being bred to work on farms, these breeds are much more suited to being kept as pets on small plots of land. There are actually several different types of pygmy goats. The ones that are common in America are descended from various species of African pygmy goats. And the ones that are prevalent across Europe that were first bred in Britain by combining the various naturally small goat species in the country, which themselves originally came from Africa. They all have fairly similar characteristics, however, in that they are generally quite stocky, grow to around 20 inches tall, and come in a range of different colors. They are highly energetic but also intelligent and friendly, and are often kept in zoos or used for medical research. These traits also make them popular as pets, though, and they can easily fit in with most families as long as there's enough room outdoors for them to run around in. Number 7. Giant African Land Snail as they're often seen in gardens feasting on plants and vegetation, snails aren't exactly usually seen as rare or interesting enough to be kept as pets. But there's one species called the Achatina fulaica, or more commonly known as the giant African snail, which has become far more popular to be kept in captivity, although this has had serious consequences for habitats around the world. 
While keeping animals from different countries as pets isn't always necessarily a bad thing, the real danger comes from when they're released, either accidentally or purposefully. Giant African snails are the most invasive species of snail around the world for just this reason because they outcompete all other species and can consume huge quantities of agricultural produce. In Europe in particular, they're the most commonly sold snails to be used as pets and are also seen as an educational aid for children to learn about taking care of animals. Native to East Africa, mainly in Kenya and Tanzania, they can grow to be more than 8 inches long and have extremely hardy shells and have been shown to be able to go without food or water for up to three years, which is why they're so easy to look after. Number 6. Daegu Found in a very specific region in central Chile, the daegu is a species of small rodent that's closely related to the chinchilla and the guinea pig. Their name translates from the local language to mean mouse or rat, but despite their similarities, they're a very different animal. Larger than a hamster at up to 12 inches long, they are a highly social species that live in communal burrows in the wild. They can dig out a living space at a remarkably quick time because of their ability to work together to create digging chains to get the work done. And they're quite noisy, with at least 15 different distinct sounds that are used to communicate with each other. Unlike hamsters, daegus are active during the day, which makes them more interesting to keep as pets. And recently, after initially being bred around the world for use in medical research, their popularity as an exotic pet has increased. They are, however, prolific breeders, so aren't legal everywhere because of the effect they would have on local ecosystems if they were to escape. States like California and Alaska strictly prohibit their ownership, as does the entire country of New Zealand. And even though they're allowed elsewhere, you rarely ever see one in a pet store. They can also be quite a handful to take care of thanks to their inability to dig and chew. They'll easily break through a plastic bottom cage, like the kind usually used to house hamsters in, and require an enclosure made from metal to keep them contained. It's also incredibly important to socialize them from a young age too, and to keep them in a small group, otherwise they'll become stressed and may be prone to bite. For those that have trained their daegus well though, they're a great pet and can live a surprisingly long time with some living to 13 years old before showing any signs of health complications. Number 5. Wallaroo Australia has a wide range of animals that are only native to the country and not seen anywhere else in the world. While you're most likely familiar with kangaroos and wallabies, neither one is exactly ideal to be kept as a pet, but there's a lesser known animal that's the midpoint between the two and is known as a wallaroo. Described as being slightly smaller than a kangaroo and slightly bigger than a wallaby, they can grow to anything between 24 and 40 inches long, depending on the exact species, and can weigh up to 100 pounds. They stand on their back legs just like kangaroos, which means their front paws are available to be used for feeding and manipulating objects. They also keep their young in their front pouches for as long as a year after birth. Wallaroos need plenty of space in the backyard to hop around in, ideally around 2,000 square feet and 6-foot tall fences surrounding it. And while they are very shy at first, when they're in a friendly environment, they'll soon develop personalities that are friendly, playful, and affectionate, but also incredibly mischievous. Owners have often described them causing damage as a way to get attention, which means you need to be ready to spend a lot of time with them to prevent things from getting out of hand. As with other marsupials, exporting wallaroos from Australia is strictly controlled, and even if you are legally able to acquire one, many countries and states expressly ban ownership because they're classified as an exotic species. Number 4. Kinkajou Closely related to raccoons, kinkajous are a species of mammal that are native to the rainforest regions of South and Central America. They spend the vast majority of their lives in the trees, where they use their tails as a fifth hand to swing between the branches. And despite being classified as being omnivorous, more than 90% of their diet is made up of fruit. Growing up to 52 inches long with a further 22 inch long tail, they're extremely energetic creatures that have a 5 inch long tongue that have developed to allow them to find fruit and nectar. It's rare to see them in the wild, however, not because they are at threat, but because they're fully nocturnal and are able to move between trees without making much noise. In captivity, though, their behavior can be very different. They're often known as honey bears because of their love of honey, but they've never been seen foraging for it themselves in the wild. A well-socialized kinkajou will be friendly, playful, quiet, and relatively clean, but they become upset if they're kept awake during the day or are surrounded by loud noises, and in these situations they may lash out. In some Central American countries where keeping them as pets is more common, they're called micoleon, which means lion monkey. Number 3. Madagascan Hissing Cockroach 
Most sensible people around the world do everything they can to prevent cockroaches from entering their homes, but there are some who see Madagascan hissing cockroaches in a very different way and are convinced that they're the best pet you could ever have. Native to the island of Madagascar, they're one of the largest cockroach species that can grow up to three inches long. In the wild, they live in rotting remains of trees and are much cleaner than other species that feed on other substances. But the unusual thing about the Madagascan hissing cockroaches, in particular, is that they don't have any wings. Instead, they are brilliant climbers, and no matter where you keep one in captivity, even if it's a glass box, they'll be able to climb virtually to any spot. They only need to be fed vegetables and can live up to five years, and will quite happily be handled. It's possible to keep them in a relatively small space, such as a fish tank, and they're very easy to look after. Of course, the main attraction of them is that they're one of the only species of roach that can hiss, something that occurs because of their ability to expel air through openings in the fourth segment of their bodies. You may also be familiar with them from game shows such as Fear Factor and promotional campaigns, particularly around Halloween when people are challenged to eat them. While this isn't necessarily dangerous, they are known to contain a mild neurotoxin that can make your mouth feel numb and make it difficult to swallow, so it's not exactly the best idea. Number 2. Pogona There are eight species of lizards that are categorized as a pogona, but you'll probably be more familiar with them as being called bearded dragons. They get this name because of the beard of scales that grows on the underside of their throats and can take on a range of different colors. Native to Australia, they can grow up to 24 inches long and spend most of their time in trees in search of insects to eat. In the wild, they are fiercely territorial and can change color to compete with others, and it's because of this aggression that when in captivity, the males should normally be kept on their own. They'll fight with other males and breed with females at every chance they get, but when kept in the right conditions, they'll be docile and calm. Despite restrictions in Australia about the local wildlife being sold as pets, bearded dragons have become popular household companions around the world for people wanting something a little different. They need a very specific environment to remain healthy, and if that happens, they can live for at least 20 years. Number 1. Slow Loris The slow loris is undoubtedly one of the cutest animals in the world, and while keeping them as pets has become increasingly more common in recent years, there have been campaigns by animal welfare organizations to try to reverse this trend because of how cruel this can be for the animals. They're native to Southeast Asia in countries like Bangladesh, India, Sumatra, and China, and there are at least eight different known species. As their name would suggest, they move very slowly through the undergrowth when they're foraging at night, and this is an ingenious defense mechanism. They are virtually silent as they move, and if they sense anything around them, they'll freeze in place. In Indonesia, they're actually called malu-malu, which means shy one, because when they're frightened, they'll stop moving and cover their face with their arms. This shouldn't be misinterpreted as a friendly posture, though, because slow lorises have a toxic bite. Instead of producing the toxins in the mouths, it's actually secreted from glands in their armpits, so they need to raise their arms to lick themselves so they're ready to defend against a threat. Ownership of a slow loris is forbidden in most countries around the world, mainly because they don't transport very well, and wildlife traders often remove their teeth to make them safer for human interaction. They are popular pets in Indonesia, though, where they're often given to children. But even there, they're now classified as an endangered species in the wild because so many were hunted for the wildlife trade or for their fur. Watch our Animals playlist for more top 15 videos about animals. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best animal-related videos.